The initial Epstein file dump is just the beginning, with more high-profile names promised to be released in the coming days and weeks. But what emerged last night certainly raised a few eyebrows. Here are the most interesting revelations. Joanna Schoberg, a masseuse for Epstein who accompanied him on his trip, said Epstein told her that Bill Clinton, quote, likes them young, referring to girls. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Clinton continues to deny ever visiting Epstein Island, despite flying on his plane at least 26 times. Schoberg also revealed the bizarre circumstances of when she met Prince Andrew with a 17-year-old Virginia Jeffrey. Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell put the puppet on Virginia's lap, and I sat on Andrew's lap, and they put the puppet's hand on Virginia's breast, and Andrew put his hand on my breast, and they took a photo. The puppet was a miniature version of Prince Andrew. Draw your own connotations from that one. Jeffrey said she was directed to have sex with billionaire and then hedge fund manager Glenn Dubin, as well as billionaire businessman Tom Pritzker, executive chairman of Hyatt Hotels. Pritzker is also a prominent member of the Aspen Institute, a globalist non-profit funded by the Gates Foundation. Epstein also wrote an email offering money to disprove Stephen Hawking was involved in an underage orgy on his island. Then you have the celeb name drops. He obviously didn't kill himself, just like Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Shut up! I know he's your friend, but I don't care. The magician David Copperfield was allegedly a friend of Epstein's, performing tricks at his house. Schoberg claims Copperfield was aware of at least some of the nature of Epstein's activities because he had a conversation with her about it. Michael Jackson, the king of pop, who, depending on who you believe, was either a notorious nonce or the victim of a massive frame-up. Jackson was allegedly at Epstein's Palm Beach mansion at least once, although Schoberg says she was not directed to service him. Then we have two more contemporary names that no one saw coming. Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Blanchett. Schoberg claims that when she was massaging Epstein, he would brag about being on the phone to celebrities including DiCaprio, Blanchett and Bruce Willis. It's important to emphasise that just because famous people knew or were pictured with Epstein or Maxwell doesn't mean they were involved in his sordid activities. Case in point, Donald Trump, who despite the claims of screeching shit libs, was exonerated yet again in yesterday's data dump. <laughs> In the coming days, we're likely to find out the identity of John Doe 113, a purported Epstein affiliate and witness who is alleged to have engaged in serious wrongdoing. But how many names will never see the light of day? This one was redacted from yesterday's dump. We also learned that Jeffrey kept a journal 300 pages long, filled with the names of men involved with Epstein and what they got up to, but that she burned it in a bonfire. Whoops. Next, we'll get into what's still being hidden about Epstein's secret operation, and it's far more damaging than anything they've released over the last 24 hours. Don't know about you, but I'm gonna be heading into the new year trying to cut back on sugar and get more protein into my diet. Well, how about working towards that goal with your very first meal of the day? With Magic Spoon, cereal reinvented. Magic Spoon is great for a low carb lifestyle, containing four to five net carbs per serving with 140 calories per serving. And best of all, there's no compromise on taste. Magic Spoon packs in all that flavor you remember from childhood while remaining wholesome, high quality, and with absolutely no artificial ingredients. The variety pack comes in four delicious flavours. Fruity, frosted, cocoa, and peanut butter. My standout favourite's gotta be cocoa. Mmm. Mmm, turns the milk all chocolatey. Magic Spoon is a high protein meal or treat that you can enjoy at any time of the day. And it fits a variety of lifestyles. It's high protein, keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, that's crucial, wheat free and naturally flavoured. Click the link down below to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use the promo code PJW at checkout to get $5 off any order. Or go to magicspoon.com slash PJW. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. That's a win-win anyway you slice it. So start the new year off right by clicking the link below. Or scan the QR code on the screen and use the code PJW for your $5 off. Or go to magicspoon.com slash PJW to save $5 off your order today. When the FBI raided Epstein's New York mansion in 2019, they found copious amounts of CDs and hard drives containing 
containing nude images of women and girls. They photographed the items but then said they didn't have a warrant to remove them. And when they returned on July 11th, four days later, they were no longer there. Epstein's lawyer then supposedly returned the items to the residence, but FBI agents could not be certain that the data contained on the CDs and hard drives was the same as the ones that were taken. Did Epstein's people scrub some of the data and why did the FBI not secure the evidence in the first place? These are the real Epstein files. This is where you'll find all the names and those files will likely never see the light of day. We're distracted with irrelevant info about Epstein's calls with Hollywood actors. While this bombshell intel appears to have mysteriously vanished. Referring to this still secret evidence, Mike Cernovich says that the new data dump is simply a mop-up operation. Notably absent from the new data dump is any information as to why Epstein was keeping all this blackmail material and who he was working for. But Epstein's connection to intelligence agencies really is the elephant in the living room. Why did Epstein blanket his numerous mansions with surveillance cameras covering every corner of every room? Why did he have a secret control room in the belly of his New York house where he could personally monitor every camera when federal agents busted open Epstein's safe and found both photographic and digital evidence of the abuse of minors. Why were those files copiously labelled with the names of both the victims and the abusers? Obviously Epstein was collecting blackmail material. He was engaging in compromise. But on behalf of who? According to former Israeli spy Ari Ben Menashe, Epstein ran a complex intelligence operation at the behest of Mossad. It's widely reported that Ghislaine Maxwell's father, Robert Maxwell, was a double or even triple agent working for both British intel and Israeli intelligence. Ben Menashe claimed that once Robert Maxwell knew that Epstein had designs on his daughter, he asked Mossad for the green light to induct Epstein into his inner circle. According to Ben Menashe, both Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein were agents of the Israeli intelligence services. We know that former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak met with Epstein dozens of times, but according to Ben Menashe, when it became clear that Epstein was basically useless at everything else, his primary role became blackmailing American and other political figures. This is probably the most important facet of the whole Epstein saga, but mainstream news coverage routinely ignores it entirely. Wonder why? America's greatest ally blackmailing top American politicians? Surely not. And why did the US government negotiate a non-prosecution agreement with Epstein and his co-conspirators in Florida? Questions also continue to swirl over the weirder proclivities of what Epstein and his elite cohorts were really up to. We know that Epstein was obsessed with trying to groom the tech elite. His infamous dinners with Bill Gates. What did you know about him when you were meeting with him? Uh, you know, I had dinners with him. Uh, I regret doing that. He also tried to cozy up to Elon Musk, inviting him to his mansion. But Musk immediately got the heebie-jeebies and decided to steer well clear. But like basically all elitists, Epstein was transfixed with transhumanism and life extension technologies. Turns out Epstein wanted to freeze his own head and yes, also his penis. Epstein's sprawling ranch in New Mexico, which was pedantically maintained by staff, yet rarely used or visited by Epstein himself, appeared to have one main bizarre function, to serve as a baby-making facility where Epstein would attempt to help foster his dream of, quote, seeding the human race with his DNA by impregnating women. According to the New York Times, Mr. Epstein told scientists and businessmen about his ambitions to use his New Mexico ranch as a base where women would be inseminated with his sperm and would give birth to his babies. Epstein's goal was to have 20 women impregnated at a time at the 33,000 square foot ranch. This is why since the early 2000s, Epstein became obsessed with ingratiating himself with the technological and scientific elite. But how does the pursuit of life extension and this bizarre baby harvesting program connect with Epstein's sordid sex parties and his trafficking of minors? And bear with me here because this is where it gets well freaky. Several ancient powerful cults believed that engaging in occult tantric sex magic rituals could extend their lives by decades. One of these cults, the cult of Iana, is reportedly still active in the United States and Europe today. This is all explained in a rare book called Cull and Occult. The book explains how rulers down the centuries believed that sexual contact with minors would re-energize their bodies and extend their lives. This book is actually part of the Stanley Kubrick archives because Kubrick used it as a primary research source for his movie Eyes Wide Shut, which of course centered around a shadowy elitist cabal based out of New York City that 
routinely engaged in, well, let's say Epstein-like shenanigans. <laughs> Gee, I wonder who Kubrick was trying to warn us about. Who do you think those people were? Those were not just ordinary people there. If I told you their names, I'm not going to tell you their names, but if I did, I don't think you'd sleep so well. So as is depicted in the film, the sex magic rituals performed by Epstein and his co-conspirators weren't just about fulfilling their perverted sexual fantasies. They were also part of the occult belief that absorbing psychosexual energy from victims would actually make them live longer. Bizarre beyond belief. I know how crazy it sounds. But the life extension angle with Epstein isn't some QAnon BS. It was literally reported by the New York Times. No one's talking about any of that though. No one's talking about the missing blackmail material from Epstein's mansion. Everyone's still being distracted by complete nothing burgers like Prince Andrew and Stephen Hawking. <laughs> If you value what I do and you want to help support me, please visit pauljosephwatson.locals.com and either pledge a one-time donation or subscribe to join my community, get early access videos and message me directly. And exclusive live streams coming soon too. Promise. Check out the Locals link down in the description. And don't forget to take a look at the brand new website, modernity.news. That's where you'll find all my content, including exclusive articles. That's modernity.news. <laughs> Thank you.